Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, people of God, I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Greetings to all sinners, greetings to all backsliders, and greetings to all those who are in Christ Jesus. The topic here is, what name should we baptize in? Is it Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Is that a name? Or is it the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the name? So the question is, are we really truly baptizing in the name? Because some also refer to him as Yahshua the Savior. And so many would baptize in the, the phrase Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Many will use the name the Lord Jesus Christ and some will use Yahshua. And therefore, let us go to the scripture and let me declare unto you. Before I do so, let me give a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this session. I pray that you'll be in this session. Bless me, guide me, touch my lips, oh Father. Speak unto your people according to thus said the Lord, according to your word. Give your people hearing that they will hear, understanding that they will understand, hearts that they will be receptive even to the truth of your word. I give you praise. I give you glory in Jesus' name. So, uh, I'm Dr. Sterling B, and the Spirit of God in me greets the Spirit of God in you. And I hope that you are having a great day so far. All right, now, let's look at Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 declare, Now is there salvation in, nor is there, nor is there salvation in any other name, for there is no other name under heaven given among men, by which we must be saved. And therefore, that name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, let us look at Matthew 28, verse 19. And Matthew 28, verse 19 declares, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Now, this is in question because here it is, a name was not mentioned. However, many theologians and many ministers use this phrase, neglecting the fact that they are not using a name. A phrase is not a name, and Father is not a name, Son is not a name, and Holy Ghost is not a name. So the question they should be asking, what is the name? And so when we look at other scriptures, it shows us and tells us the name. But before you can be baptized in those names or with the name, you first have to believe. Who do you believe on? Who do you believe in? And why do you believe? Who believe on the name of Jesus Christ must be baptized. Whoever believe it on the name of Jesus Christ must be baptized and will be baptized. According to Mark 16 and verse 16. Let's go to Mark 16 and verse 16. Mark 16. Matthew, Mark, okay, Matthew, Mark. So Mark 16 and verse 16, let's start there from the beginning, okay? Mark 16 and verse 16. What does it say here? It says that uh, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. In other words, you must first believe so that you can be baptized. And when you believe, you will then enter into the covenant of baptism. Now let's look at Acts 8 and verse 12. Acts 8 and verse 12. Go with me to Acts 8 and verse 12. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, the book of Acts, written by the great apostle Paul. Here we go. Acts 8 and verse 12 says, But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. There you have it, right? Okay, so, they believe. And you cannot be baptized unless you believe. You must believe in order to be baptized. And therefore, the, the, uh, the man of God, rightfully, John says, go and therefore bring forth fruit for repentance. And so, when you show fruit for repentance, you are now walking in belief because you begin to do the things that you need to do. All right, so let's go back to uh, the question at hand. 
All right. Acts 2.38. Let's look at Acts 2.38 and let's investigate when the name was used. And here it is, Acts 2, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Acts. Once again, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. For those who don't know how to find the scripture as efficiently as, as many of you can. So Acts 2 and verse 38 reads, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And he shall, be, and he shall uh, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Here we are focusing on baptism. So the name here was mentioned. Jesus Christ, the name was mentioned. And so when we look at the scripture, we understand that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is not a name. That was a command. Jesus Christ gave his disciples this command. When did he give them the, 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 his disciples the command? He gave them the command while he was still on earth, while he was still with them. He was simply commanding them, commanding them, telling them what to do. He did not tell them the name because he was currently with them and, and he did not want to show a sense of pride or a sense of arrogantness or a sense of uh, being lifted up. Uh, or a sense of showing, you know, some of you, you say, it's my church. Some of you begin to say, I found the church, it's my church, it's my, this. you begin to establish your authority. So he did not want to do that with his disciples, he was simply commanding them, okay? And they understood the command. However, they were not using the name at the time when Jesus Christ gave them the command. They did not use the name until he was ascended into heaven and then they began to use the name hence you see in acts chapter 2 peter used the name jesus christ now let's go to acts chapter 10 verse 48 for those who are with me acts 10 and verse 48 acts 10 verse 48 let's look again at the time that the name was used all right now verse 48 of acts chapter 10 says And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they prayed him to tarry certain days, right? Okay, they asked him to tarry certain days, but here it is. He commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. And the name of the Lord was established to be Jesus Christ of Nazareth already. So here the apostle command them, okay? Before, Jesus Christ commanded the apostles, telling them what to do. And now the apostles, they are commanding others. Because the command that Jesus Christ gave them was to go into all the world, preach, number one, teach, number two, and baptize, number three. And they must baptize in the name. But the name was not given and in Matthew at that particular verse. And men and women of God need to understand that today and stop baptizing people with the phrase. They need to begin to baptize people with the name and not the phrase. The phrase is the name of the Father, Son, and the name of the Son. The name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. That is the phrase which was used in Matthew 28 verse 19. The name began to use after Jesus ascended into heaven and Peter received the Holy Ghost. Many others received the Holy Ghost and they began to teach, preach, and baptize using the name. I hope you are with me so far, ladies and gentlemen. All right, now, you can, there's another question that arise. Uh, someone says that, uh, can a person baptize more than one? Can this person be baptized more than one? So now we have established the name. Not only that we have established the name, we have established that one must first believe okay and so when we establish those facts we are now entering into the next segment now you can be baptized more than once why hence acts chapter 19 3 let's go there acts 19 verse 3 you can be baptized more than once depends depend you can be baptized over but depending on your situation okay now let's look at excuse me acts 19 verse 3 first 
Acts 19 and verse 3. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. So hence, one was baptized unto John's baptism. Before Jesus Christ, they were being baptized by John. And that's why they say unto John's baptism. Not only that John was uh, the forerunner of Jesus Christ, but there was also an apostle that was called John. So what is this? They were saying that we were baptized unto John's. It means that they were baptized unto John the Baptist and not John the apostle. Because the apostle John began baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. So they would not refer to the Apostle John. They would refer to John the Baptist. And so uh, what was it that John the Baptist was baptizing? In? He was not using the name. John the Baptist was not using a name. How do I know that? Let's look at some other scriptures here. Verse 4. Then Paul, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance saying unto the people that they should believe on him, Jesus Christ, which should come after him, that is on Jesus Christ. So here he used the name again, Jesus Christ, telling you that John was baptizing them unto repentance. The answer is John was baptizing them unto repentance. John was saying, I baptize you for repentance, or I baptize you uh, based on the confession of your faith uh, unto repentance. Uh, for the remission of sin, or John will say, I baptize you for the remission of your sin, or I baptize you uh, unto repentance, or I, or I baptize you because you have repented. Whatever phrase John might have used, I wasn't there, I don't know what phrase he used, but John would have used a phrase. John would not have used the phrase, but in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. John would not use that neither, because um, that came when Jesus Christ gave the command and John the Baptist was already dead. All right, so let's look at uh, another scripture, Acts chapter nine, verse three. Let's look at Acts nine, verse three, and, and we're gonna break it down some more. All right, Acts nine, verse three. Acts nine, verse three. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around him about him a light. No, that's not what I want. That's not what I want. All right, so uh, Mark 1 verse 4 is what I would want. Okay, Acts 19 verse 3 is what I would, uh, not Acts 9, but Acts 19 verse 3, which we have covered already, John's baptism. They were baptized unto John baptism, and then the apostle baptized them in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the point that I wanted to get to, which would have been in verse um, 5. So before I go to Mark 1 verse 4, let's go back to Acts 19 and verse uh, 5. Acts 19 verse 5. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That gives you precedent. That gives you the okay that one can be baptized again. If someone is not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you can be baptized over in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If someone comes to uh, the uh, faith of the Church of God's seventh day, we uh, commonly would baptize them over in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. However, not all seven-day churches does that. Now, the Adventists use the phrase Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Adventists use the phrase Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But the Church of God, seven-day, uses the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, even though not all of them do. There are some who take on the name of Church of God, seven-day, and they have not been trained. They have not been taught. And hence, we need to reach these people and teach them the right way. It's one thing to take the name and to use the name because the name is not registered in terms of copyright and all those other things. So any minister can open a church and attach to his church the name Church of God Seventh Day. It is not so with the Adventist. You must get approval by the conference before you can use the Adventist name. And therefore all the Adventist ministers would baptize the member in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost without using the name. They will use the phrase, but not the name. Hence, we 
come to this now uh, conclusion that someone can be baptized over if they wish to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are many who were baptized over into the Hebrew name, which is Yahshua. So many were not satisfied with the name Jesus Christ because that's Greek. And then they want the original Hebrew name, which is Yahshua. So many have been rebaptized re using the name Yahshua, while others have been rebaptized using the name Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, let's go to Mark 1 and verse 4. Let's go to Mark chapter 1 and verse 4. Mark 1 verse 4. Let's see if I can get that up here. Mark 1 and verse 4. It's easier for me to use the Bible. Here, let's go to the Bible. Matthew, Mark. Matthew, then Mark. Matthew, Mark. All right. Easier for me to use the Bible than the computer. And so let's go to Mark, Mark, Mark. Mark chapter 1 and verse 4. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. So there you have it. John was simply baptizing unto repentance. He was baptizing people unto repentance. He was not using the phrase nor a name. John did not use a phrase and John did not use a name. Are you with me so far, somebody? All right, so there we have it. John did not use a name and he did not use a phrase. He, uh, uh, the, uh, he did not use that phrase, okay? I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. John did not use that phrase. John did not use the name Jesus Christ of Nazareth. John did not use the name the Lord Jesus Christ. John did not use the name Yahshua. John simply baptized the people unto repentance. I baptize you for the remission of your sins. That's what John did. Acts, uh, Acts, let's see, where am I now? John 3, 5. John 3, 5. This is when Jesus began to teach the people, okay? And a matter of fact, he was teaching Nicodemus at the time. He was speaking to Nicodemus at the time. John 3, verse 5. And he told Nicodemus that Nicodemus must be born again. And hence, Jesus Christ said, unto Nicodemus verily verily I say unto you except a man be born of the water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God so here it is Jesus Christ is declaring that each and every man must be born of the water baptism is what we do to represent being born of the water then it is also declared by John the Baptist that there will come one after him who shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So we want to go to that as well. We want to go to that. So when you are baptized with the Holy Ghost, you are born of the Spirit. When you are baptized with water, you are born of the water. All right. Now, I want to move on a little further here in the Word of God to help you to understand some more. All right. So we have covered the name. We have covered the phrase. We have covered the reason and we have covered that you can be baptized over again. Now, I understand many of you have the concern, Ephesians 4 and verse 5. Remember Ephesians 4 and verse 5 tells you one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Remember that? Ephesians uh, tells you about that. So let's go to Ephesians 4 and verse 5 for those who are with me. Ephesians 4 and verse 5. Let's see if I can get there as quickly. All right, P-H, Ephesians 4, uh, verse 5, let's get there, verse 5, Ephesians 4 and verse 5, okay? So the Bible declare, in Ephesians, uh, Ephesians 4 and verse 5, give it to me, all right, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, right? One Lord, one faith, one baptism, so don't take it out of context, let's keep it in context, this is trying to tell you that there is one Lord, there is one faith, and there is one baptism. One true Lord, one true faith, one true baptism. It doesn't mean that you cannot be rebaptized. Okay? People who backslide, they come back to the Lord. They, they receive a rebaptism. That's okay. They can and they might not. 
Some people argue with that because the Bible in Revelation says go and do your first work over again. So some people, they backslide depending on the extent of their backslide, backsliding, they might want to be baptized over. Some people might backslide for a season and they return back to the Lord and they are not rebaptized, depending on your relationship with the Lord. Hence, uh, the Bible said that you must be born of the water and you must be born of the spirit. Born, in, born of the water means that you are baptized. Born of the spirit means that you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. So let's look at some other scriptures. All right, uh, Acts 8, verse 16. Let's go to Acts 8, verse 16. Acts chapter 8 and verse 16. All right, so Acts chapter 8 and verse 16 tells us that uh, for as yet he was falling upon once them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he gives the name again. Okay, Acts 8, verse 16, give the name again, declaring the name. They had been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't argue with that. You have it right there, plain and simple, right before your very eye. So what name was Jesus Christ baptized in? Someone might ask, did he have to repent? Okay, and the answer is no. Jesus Christ did not have to repent. And Jesus Christ was not baptized into any name. All right, now... Even though he was baptized by John, John might not have said, I baptize you, Jesus, whatever. He just simply dipped him in the water and brought him back up out of the water. There was no need for John to ask Jesus Christ to repent of sin. A matter of fact, Jesus Christ was loaded with sins, your sins, my sins. He took on your sins. He took on my sins. He had no sins of his own. So in Matthew 3, 16, uh, Matthew 3, from verse 13 all the way to verse 17 tells you about the baptism of Jesus Christ and when we look at the baptism of Jesus Christ we did not um, see or heard where John used a particular phrase okay so Matthew tells us the recollection of the baptism where that's Matthew, thir Matthew 3 all right for time's sake I don't really want to go too much into uh, into it or read too much of it so let me try to see if i can get to uh matthew chapter 3 and read a little bit there all right so when matthew chapter 3 explained to us the uh the the scripture of the back uh, concerning the baptism of jesus christ we need to make note let me go to my my bible here which is quicker than trying to bring it up on the computer here all right, so for time's sake, I want to—I don't want to make this uh, video very long. I want to get right to the point, and let's go right to the point right here. All right, so from verse 13, let's read from verse 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbid him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee instead, and you come to me to be baptized. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh unto us to fulfill all the scripture, all the righteousness of God. And then he baptized him, he suffered it to be so. In other words, John gave um, heed and hearkened unto the voice of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, which means that Jesus Christ was dipped into the water and cometh up out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Now this representing Jesus Christ being baptized with the Spirit of God or by the Spirit of God. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ was even baptized with the power of the Holy Ghost, even though he was the Holy Ghost already. Wow, this is just like more power being given to the flesh. So if Jesus Christ... The Son of God is God among us in the form of flesh. And here it is, he himself um, went into baptism. And Mark 1 from verse 9 through 11 also gives us uh, a recollection of that. So when we look at the synopsis of the gospel, we will see that they uh, confer with each other. They back up each other. They, um, how do you call it? reinforces what the the prior 
apostle might say or the, uh, the prior disciple might say so they reinforce we, each other and that's why the bible say here a little there a little when we study so look at mark um, mark 1 from verse 9 and it came to pass in those days that jesus came from nazareth of galilee and was baptized of john in jordan he was baptized of john in jordan and again many people mi misunderstand this by thinking of this jordan means it is actual river jordan but when we do the study we understand that it's a runoff of the river the river jordan ran off into a particular area and john was using that that strip of water that body of water to baptize people and straightway coming up out of the water he saw the heaven open so he was coming up out of the water so it's not like the catholic priest that put water upon the baby's forehead and baptized them a baby has no um no cognizant or consciousness of wrong and right babies don't know the difference between wrong and right babies cannot repent so that shows you that the the church that does that are leading god's people astray so any church that baptizes a baby they are leading god's people astray and they are not part of the true church the true church does not do that i'm just uh, listen to my words i'm giving you a hint okay the true church does not do that the false church will baptize babies all right so if you are a part of a church that baptizes a baby you are part of a false church i'm telling you that you you might be upset with me for saying that but that's okay okay I indeed baptize you with water, but Jesus Christ came straightway up out of the water. All right, now let's look at some more facts here. All right, uh, Jesus Christ was not baptized using a name, and he was not baptized because he needed to repent. No, that did not happen. All right, so why in Matthew it is said, why in Matthew 28, verse 19, it is then said, he must baptize. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Why was that said? It was said because Jesus Christ will later on baptize you with the Holy Ghost. You would not be baptized by any man with the Holy Ghost, but only through the Father, Jesus Christ, or only through the, the Father, God, or through the Son, Jesus Christ, you can be baptized um, by the Holy Ghost. And that's why he said, in the name and he's referred to his father he referred to himself and he referred to the holy ghost why is that so why is that important you need to know that the father is god number one the son is god number one again and the holy spirit is god number one so there are three number one the father is god the son is god and the holy spirit is god you need to know that so so jesus christ told his disciple baptizing them in the name of the father who is god in the name of the son who is still god but god in the flesh as jesus christ of nazareth when he walked the earth and in the name of the holy spirit who is still god who is jesus christ in the flesh so any way you look at it any way you take it it is still God. So you are using the name that represents God himself. But we are saved in the name of his son, who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We are saved in the name of his son, who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is God in the flesh. Hence, it is said, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. It was simply a command given to them, and then the command was fulfilled after he ascended up into heaven, and they began to teach, preach, and baptize, and they used the name. Ladies and gentlemen, John the Baptist did tell you, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, meaning Jesus Christ. John the Baptist said, There will one come after me whose shoes I'm not laid with loose. So let's look at Luke 3 16. Hopefully, the last scripture as I conclude right here and wrap it up. Luke chapter 3 and verse 16. Quickly, Luke chapter 3 and verse 16. Okay. John answered, saying unto them, All I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with water 
add the Holy Ghost and with fire. God bless you. May you be well in Jesus' name. Hope you have learned and hope you have understood. Bless you.